So this guy right here is y equals y equals um, negative x squared plus four x to the parabola. This one right here is y equals x. Right. So let's take a, a look at uh, like another perspective of well, we're gonna we're gonna rotate this region around this line right here. This line is y equals negative 1. So we're going to look again at the washer method and then we're going to uh, and then look at the shell method. Okay. Um, do that. So I'm going to have to there. I don't know why it's behaving like this. But uh, you can see if I, if I slide this around, the guy moves around. So it, what that represents is the, the, a little rectangle that's going to get rotated around this line and become the washer. Okay. And if we were to take the volume of this washer, and 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 add them all together, what would we get? The volume of the whole shape. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at this washer. Um, yeah. Whoa, there's the washer. Okay. And if we if we if we move through the shape, we see all of the washers. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've got all these washers, and they have really thin, thin volumes. Okay. Um, so. But let's, let's come back to this one, I think. Start with the page. Take the picture. It's super lame. Okay. So this washer has a big radius. radius. And what is this from there to there? From there to where where? From like the left side of the washer to the right side of the washer. The width. The width of the yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah, that's the width of the washer. It's what we call dx. The tiny change in x from the left side of the washer to the right side of the washer. You have to imagine that this washer is made of this really thin rectangle. Um, here we go back here. This really thin rectangle that we rotate all the way around. And we just let the, the, the thinness of this washer get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And uh, when we add up all those really, really thin washers, we get the volume of the whole thing. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's the idea. So. Look at one of those washers. How do we find the, the volume of this washer? Uh, okay. So let's start with uh, how do we find the big? Yeah, so this guy here is uh, y equals negative x squared plus 4x. And this function right here is y equals x. So if the area of this washer is uh, pi times big R squared minus pi times little r squared, what's the big R worth? X squared. Negative x squared, negative x squared, negative x squared plus little x. x squared. Okay, so pi times negative x squared plus 4x mm -hmm. squared minus pi times, what's the little r? Squared. X. Simple x, and we square it, that's r squared. Factor out that pi. This part uh, will be x squared minus 8x plus 16. Um, let's see, x is the, uh, the fourth. Four, four, okay. uh, x to the third plus 16x squared. Um, and then this will be a minus x squared. Pi times x to the fourth minus 8x cubed. Plus 15x squared. 
That's the area for, for a washer at any given value of x. I plug in one, it'll give me the, the area of that uh, washer at one. If I plug in two or three or whatever, it'll give me the, the area of that washer, that x value. If you want to find the volume, we multiply it by the width. We call that width dx. So we find these values, and then we add them all up to the, to the point that we have an infinite number of washers. And wait, wait, wait. The first one is the what? I thought we just saw one. This here? Yeah. yeah. Area. Oh, okay. Area of a washer at x. Area of a washer at x. Area times the width dx that gives us the volume, and when we let that go to infinity and we add them all up, that's a loose definition of the, uh, the definite integral. Okay. So this definite integral is going to go from zero to what? To here. Well, no, but don't we have to set them equal to each other so we know what x there is? To each other. Negative x squared plus four x equals x. Uh, let's think of everything over here. So we got two x squared minus 4x equals 0. Go. Where'd you get the 2x squared? Uh, oh, wait, this, is, this is x, not x squared, sorry. Okay. Let's go back here to this place. x squared, so add x squared to both sides. We subtract 4x from both sides, sorry. You get negative 3x okay. equals 0. Factor of x, we get x minus 3. Zero, so x equals zero, or x equals three. three. That's the width of five is three. It's three. Zero to three. Okay. I'm going to bother you with the details of taking in and plugging in three, plugging in zero, subtracting. We did that a bunch of times. You guys are good at that. So, but not three. All right. So, what it, it really comes down to this little rectangle and rotating that rectangle around, figuring out the dimensions of that rectangle. Like the, like how tall is this rectangle? Kind of what I think that. So now let's go to rotating it around a vertical axis so that we get a, oh, let me, the, the other thing that I didn't show you yet is when we take all of these washers and we add them all up, okay, this is the shape that we get when we rotate this region around y equals negative one. That guy right there. And that's just the sum of all of these all of these washers throughout here. Pretty neat and pretty cool. Okay. So let's still look at the washer method, but then we're gonna rotate it around a vertical axis. So let's see if I can figure out which one that's supposed to be. Yeah. So now we're going to rotate it around a, a vertical axis. Let's see what that looks like. Rotate around that vertical axis like that. How's that going to work? Well, we can now take these rectangles as horizontal rectangles and define everything the same way. We still need to find the large radius, the small radius. It all works the same way. And there's one of our washers. If we add all of them up, we get this shape. Volume of this shape. That's so cool. Okay. So, this washer has a large radius. Going to be in terms of y, so it's going to this a to b is going to be on the y-axis. Let's see what it's going to take. Um, what's the what's the measure of the big radius? So 
say yes. Okay. Is the difference between the largest body of data and what is smallest? I'm just asking for the large radius here. Yeah. How big is it from here to there, or for another washer from here to there? That's going to be the area of the large circle, but what is the radius? What is big R? Well, this equation is y equals x, and this is y equals negative x squared plus 4x, just like before. And it's rotated around the y-axis. So it would just be y? It would just be y. We solve each equation. When we do this in terms of y, we solve each equation for x, and then everything's in terms of y, like it was before in terms of x. Now it's in terms of y. Okay. So it's just y. So the large radius is just y. Okay, so uh, r is just y. Big R is just y. Okay, how about the smaller radius? Negative y squared plus 4y. Now that becomes the tricky part. We have to solve for x. We have to solve this for x. Itself. Get x equals is x equal. It's tricky. It might be even trickier than it looks. What if this what if instead of y, what if this was um like what if y was equal to three? Solve for x? Yeah. How do we solve for x? We bring everything to the same side. Okay, so x squared minus 4x minus 3 equals 0. And then find the Factor it if possible. Can we factor that? Um, Negative one is positive three. Mm, negative oh, positive one. Positive one? Now that's that adds negative together to make negative, negative two. two. Well, but uh, we can. Hmm. What happens when we can't solve it by factor? The quadratic. Yes, quadratic. quadratic. Your quadratic formula. E plus or minus square root of. Now here's the thing. Right there. That's not three. It's y. y. So we use the quadratic with y. With y, x squared minus four x plus y equals zero. We use the quadratic. And now, so y is is the number is is c. So x equals. Um, negative. So negative negative four. So four. Plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times a is 1. What is c? Y. It's y over 2 times a, and a is 1. So now that is that function right here in terms of y. Uh, y and y and x, right? And we have two values of x, obviously, because we have this plus or minus. There's two values of x. For every value of y. So that's a big pain. Especially when you come over here and you got this washer cuts across there. Now the bigger radius is not y anymore. It's not this line. It's the other side of this parabola. So then we've got to find where they intersect. We've got to make two different in, uh, definite integrals. Find the volumes of both of those and then add them together. 
okay? And that's your fun. So sometimes rotating these things uh, around a vertical axis using washers, it's possible we can do this. It's, it's not impossible, so, but it is trickier. So if you want, if you're rotating something around a vertical axis, you want to use a shell method. You might want to use a shell method. Okay. So here's how the shell method goes. Okay. Okay. Uh, here, the next one, and then there. So the shell method lets you use that same rectangle as we did for the washer method. Bring everything back here. So you see the same rectangle for the washer method, and like the top of that of that uh, rectangle is that. Difficult to find? It's just the y value of this function. This function is negative x squared plus 4x. Pretty simple. If I plug in that x value, it finds the top of that rectangle. If I uh, plug in the x value into y equals x, I find the bottom of that rectangle. Okay? And so those could be interpreted when we use the washer method as the two values of the, of the radius the bigger radius and the smaller radius. In the shell method, we don't make washers. What kind of a shape is it going to make if I take this and rotate this rectangle around a vertical axis? It's not going to be a washer. It won't be a washer. A washer is flat with a hole through it. Like a, yeah, a cylindrical shape with a big hole in it, right? Like a cylinder would have a volume, but this cylinder is just going to be a shell. Just the paint oh. that you would use to paint a cylinder. Okay. So anywhere along here, it's it's simple to define the top and bottom of this rectangle. And now when we rotate it around the vertical axis, we get the shell. Okay, so we see all the shells along this whole thing. If we add up all of these shells, we get this shape. Whoa. Add up all these shells. Same, but it's different. Defining the, the volume of a shell is definitely different from finding the volume of a washer. It's a totally different shape. Same, like, same shape. Yes, same shape. But we're going to find the volume in a much more simple way. Yes. Than trying to find the radius of like these washers and stuff. Um, so what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Taking a picture. So with a washer, we took the, the surface area of a face and then multiplied it by dx. Okay. But this is different. All right. This is more like taking the radius. So we're going to define some parts of this shell, and then we're going to just going to give you how we find the volume of a, of a shell. So we've got the radius of the shell. We need to find a way to define the height of the shell. Okay. Does the height change? The height, yeah, the height changes as x changes. But it's going to be really similar to when we define the radius. Like the top of this of the of the rectangle at this point is the same is the same size as the radius of this washer that I would rotate around, say the x-axis. Okay. Right. Um, and this, let's see, from uh, from there to there, that's the the width 
of the of the shell. And if we if we look at it right there, that that tiny width again we call dx. Um, so here's how we find the volume of that shell. It's two pi r. Does this look like? Yeah, yeah. Area. The, area. the volume. The volume. This right here. Two oh. pi r. Question. It's, it's a circumference. circumference. Yeah. It would be the circumference of this circle. If you take the circumference of this circle and you multiply it by the height, you basically have the surface area of a shell. But if we think of it as like having this tiny, tiny thickness. Let's find the area of the volume. This is the volume. This is the circumference of the circle. This okay. would be the area. The area of like of a of a, a shell that's like infinitely thin. So all we need to be able to figure out is the radius of the shells that we're using. And the height of the shells that we're using. So let's Start with this one. Remember that this function right here is y equals negative x squared plus 4x. And this is y equals x. And actually we're gonna we're gonna take the definite integral from a to b of 2 pi r h dx, we got the constant multiple of 2 pi, b, so we get just r times h times dx. <coughs> so let's define uh, r. What's the radius of this thing going to be? What's that? It's an x value. It's an x value? Like when we found the radius before, it was the y? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Very good observation. The, the radius of this shell is a value of x. Which value of x? Any value of x you choose. Right? At this value of x, the radius is whatever that value of x is. Right? At this value of x, it's that value of x. If this is like 0 0.1, then the radius for that shell is 0.1. If it's uh, 2, then the radius for that shell is 2. The radius of this shell is 2 and a half. The radius of this shell is, it's just whatever x value we're, we're at. Right? Just take the x value, and since the, the axis of rotation is at the origin, then the radius itself is just whatever x value we're at. Okay? So for that shell, the radius in this case, the radius is just the value of x. Now, if we have a different axis of rotation, that changes. If we have a different axis of rotation, that changes. But of course, we're going to start, easiest case, with the y-axis being the, the axis of rotation, like we did with washers and disks being rotated over the x-axis. Right, how about the height? Okay, the height at any value of x. Keep in mind, the x value does change. Let's go back and look at how the height changes. The height of the shells or whatever the distance between this function and this function is. Whatever value of x you're at. Let's go back to here. So how are we going to find at, the, at any given x value the height of this rectangle? They're not radii anymore, right? But this y value minus the other from here to there minus this y value will give you what's left. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's the same idea as the radius minus the radius, okay? but it's it's not. Radius, right? So what is this big y value? Which one? 
one right here. We're going to take the big, the big y value minus this little y value, and then we get this guy right here. So Where we negative x squared plus 4x. So negative x squared plus 4x. Okay, that at any x value, that will give you this point on the graph. At this x value, give you that y, that point on the graph, that, that, that vertical height. Okay, and then minus x because at this say at this x value we plug in that value of x and we get this height and in, into here we get that height and then we plug this x value into this function and we get this height we subtract this from this and we get this get the height of the shell okay. so here's our radius here's our height Except for A and B, except for we already figured those out, right? Yeah. Zero to three. Zero to three. So two pi times the definite integral from zero to three of R, which is x, times h, which is negative x squared plus three x dx. And then we're just going to do this all. Mm -hmm. Very similar thing. Uh, negative x cubed. To the third? Negative one fourth x to the fourth. Negative one fourth x to the fourth. Plus square. Plus x to the third. Just x to the third. And when we take the derivative of this, we wind up with a three. That's going to go from zero to three. times, okay, so we're going to plug 3 in there, you know, using the fundamental theorem of calculus here, f of b minus f of a, negative 1 fourth times 3 to the fourth, which is 81, plus 3 to the third, which is 27, minus, plug 0 in there, that's 0, plug 0 in there, that's 0, that's just 2 pi times 81 over 4, negative 81 over 4, plus 27, Negative 45 over 4. Multiply 2 pi over 1 by negative 45 over 4. That would be negative. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I put a negative on there. So if you didn't say anything about negative. Um, so we get. Uh, I did say negative. So oh, you did? Common denominator, right? Four. Four, of course. Four. That's twenty-seven times four. Thirty-seven over four. Yeah. Thirty-seven. Twenty-seven times four. Twenty-seven times four. Twenty-seven times four is one hundred and eight. Eight. You were close. So one hundred eight minus eighty-one. Seven pi over two. Is the volume of this thing, which is way. And can you just leave like that, or seven pi over four yeah. or two? It all depends. So wait, they'll so usually have answers like that if possible. Can you scroll down just a wee bit? A wee bit. <laughs> then you'll leave it more. There we go. All the way to the bottom. <laughs> yes. Bolos. Okay, so in the book, if you're if you're gonna read the book, which is not a bad idea, you grab it. It refers to these things differently than I just did.
instead of R and H, uh, it, H is similar. It's just called H of X, just meaning as a function of X, how do you find the height? That's what this part is right here. You plug X into this equation, it'll give you the height of any shell at any value of X that I want. Instead of R, though, it's just strange. It's called P of X. I don't know why it might be. Not quite. Why would they wouldn't call it R of X? It's called P of X. <coughs> if you like R and H, use R and H. If you like P of X and H of X, use those. They're not gonna like on the AP test. Like when we have to have shorter work or anything, they're not gonna learn this wrong. If you write down R and H instead of P of X, no. No. Uh, but you will have to know it. Why do Why do they call it P of X? That I don't Just know. Just the letter. Yeah, maybe it's a. Uh, where are you from? Uh, I hate when people use T's. Yeah, I don't know why they're choosing P. I mean, technically speaking, this is what's going on. They derive that equation by doing this. Um, thinking about a shell. Kind of looking at it as let me make sure that this is how they start. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So they the way that they start to think of it is um, like a really thick, thick washer. Uh, like a washer that's this thick. Okay? Kind of like that. So you think about the big radius and the little radius, which were, you know, a, a familiar idea to us, and then this H. The the volume of this thing will be pi times big R squared uh, times H, right? That's the volume of the larger cylinder that we made here, and minus pi times uh, little R squared times h. And now, they pick this value p that's right in the middle of those two radiuses. Okay, so let me, let me bring that over here. Uh, from here, the, right in the middle, like the middle of the wall of that shell, is p. this value p. Okay. All right, so here's a, a weird thing. So they call this this width w. That's not too weird. But then they take r and they make it p plus w over 2. Because if the full thickness is w, then half the thickness is 2. And if we go to p, which is right in the middle, and we add w over 2, we're a big R. And little r is, what do you think? This is, if we start at P and add W over 2, we get to the big radius. If we start at P and subtract W over 2. Okay. And when we do this, uh, we get some nice canceling and eventually to the, the equation that we just looked at. Uh, pi times big R is P plus W over 2 squared times H minus uh, pi times minus w over 2 squared times h. Right. So we have to multiply this out. So this is going to be p squared plus uh, pw plus w squared over 4. Does that make sense? So we multiply these together. Oh, yeah. We have p times p. p times w over 2 is pw over 2 plus pw over 2 again. It's just pw over 1 plus w squared over 4. Okay. Okay. Myself times h. Let's, uh, let's, let's clean this up a little bit because what we could do is factor out a pi, factor out an h. Let's factor out that pi and that h so we don't have to write so much. Get a pi times h times this thing minus this thing. So this is going to be? P squared as well. <coughs> uh, 
Um, we're going to have negative PW. plus w to the, the w squared over 4 pi times h. And let's see. So we have p squared minus p squared. That cancels out. And PW minus or PW uh, minus a negative PW is two PW. And then W squared over four minus W squared over four. And that's all that's left, right? That all make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um so this is what we have. We have pi, now let's put 2 pi, times p, times h, times w. p is that radius that's in between the big and the small radius. Yeah. So when that width goes to 0, it's like, it's like a, the bigger radius and the smaller radius convert yeah, together. together. It's the, like they are p. And then h is the height and w is the width. Right? And this is the thing we come to call yeah. So you're not going to need to derive that unless it's a brand new question on this year's test, which would be kind of cool. Cause, uh, it's not really necessary. Anyway, all, all we wind up having is exactly what we said before. Right. So we need to be able to find, define the radius, the height of the shell, and then that's it. If we can define those two things, we can use so the shell method. And then it comes down to deciding what's better, washer or the shell method? What I'd like to use, whether it be vertical or horizontal axis rotation. All right, let's do another one. Another okay. washer. Another washer. Okay. Can you use the shell method if you rotate only a axis? You could. Harder. Well, it depends. It depends on what your function looks like. And you got to just ask yourself, if I'm going to use, if I'm going to rotate around the x-axis, okay? I'm going to rotate around the x-axis. Well, this, like this, would turn out to be like a disc. If I were to rotate it using the shell method, then I would define my rectangles horizontally. Right? Which way is easier? You just have to decide. In this case, they're about the same. Like nothing really crazy happens if we if we define a horizontal rectangle, it would be easy to figure out how big that rectangle is, no matter where it is. It would just be this value minus whatever this is. And since this one's always above this one, or always larger than this one, it wouldn't be too difficult. Okay. But we'll look at another shell method here. Okay, so oh, that's not the one I wanted. Oh, I, I, I missed, mixed, mixed this one up a while ago. Anyway, this is number three, 7.3. Okay. This is the square root of x. It's going from 0 to 4, I believe. And you can see. These are all the rectangles. If I move really fast, I actually can do this. It is going on its own. Whoa, Logan! Oh, oh, too fast. Yeah, there's an S popping off. Yeah, like 20 screens just popped up too. Okay, so it's it's kind of representing like all the possible rectangles. It's trying to show it to you really fast. Oh, it is. Okay. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll quit that. Oh, oh gosh. That wasn't cool. I think that crashed. Glad it didn't crash. All right. So anyway, as I move this, it changes the rectangle. If we rotate this around, we get that shell. Right. Visualizing the shell is the thing that's gonna help you with the shell method. Just need to think. All right. So the shell's gonna rotate around this radius, around this axis. So what's the radius, and and how do I find the height? And let me show you the shape we're going to get. Something like that. Whoa. All right. And. This is so cool. Ooh, I don't like that.
you just got to think that for any x value, if I, if I am going to randomly just choose for you an x value, and say for the x value 2, I want you to tell me all these things about this shell. That's all you have to figure out. Okay? And it's just going to build this in. First, got to find the a to b from there to there. Well, not first, but we do have to know it at some point. Um, I'm just going to put radius times height. So I give you the x value of blank. What's the radius of that value? Blank. Yeah, whatever I tell you, that's the radius. It'll change when the axis of rotation changes, which it will here. We'll do that in a while. Okay. So I'm just giving you things to think about because you're going to do this on your own. But think about what's the what's going to be the radius, what's going to be the height, and let's at least write this integral, this definite integral. And uh, I'll come and check it and see how your, your integrals look. All right. I know with the shell method and the washer method, like all this volume finding, it's difficult to, to say to yourself, we're not looking for a particular x value, we're looking for formulas, functions. Like when I plug in an x value, this function will tell me my radius, and this function will tell me my height. So if I pick an x value, the radius, how big will the radius be when I pick an x value? Oh, okay. Just whatever x is. Yeah. I'm just testing that. Okay. The height, how much is the height from here to there? Whatever y is. Whatever y is. So y, this, the y of this guy right here is the square root of x. Right, so we've got that. We've got that. That's always dx. So we're going to go 2 pi times, OK, so from 0 to what? 4. To 4. That's clear from the picture. From 0 to 4. Of uh, the radius times the height times the width. 2 pi times, we're going to go from 0 to 4. Uh, can we put these together? Yes. X to the? 3 halves. 3 halves. Two fifths x to the five halves. Two fifths x to the five halves from zero. Four. Two pi. Uh, two fifths and two. four to the five halves. Okay. Let's make this fast, right? Take the square root of four. Two. Two to the fifth. Thirty-two. Thirty-two uh, times two. Sixty-four. Sixty-four over five times 2 pi equals 128 pi over 5. Okay. Feel a little more confident? Feel like you can do another one? Yeah. Mm, maybe. Maybe? Yeah, let's try her out. Okay. Functions. Number this four. one's number four. Yeah. Oh, I didn't want it to be. But it is. It's number four. Rotate around the y-axis, okay? So the secret here, envisioning the shell. Okay? Envisioning that shell, figuring out all of the pieces of that shell. Okay? So the shells are gonna be here to there. Some in one way or another. Uh, rotate. the y-axis, look at all these different shells. So you're going to add up all those volumes of all those shells, which means we need to be able to figure out what each piece of that shell <coughs> is. It looks like one of those uh, helmets for the uh, those, like, ninja guys in the olden shows. What, like a samurai, samurai helmet? Yeah, samurai helmet, yeah. The olden shows. <laughs> the olden shows, you know. Writing things 
down, you already know. Chill out. What's your question? Minus x squared. Oh. Think about this. This shell, which represents, should represent every shell. Does that make sense? This shell that we're visualizing, this particular shell that you're looking at, represents any shell. It's got to represent any shell. Here's what I mean. It's got to represent any possible shell. Okay. I need to find a way that, given any x, to find the radius and the height of this shell. The same function gives you the radius and the height of this shell, the radius and so height of this shell, this shell, this shell. A minus x oh, minus 4. I did it so unbelievably wrong. So, <laughs> yes, this shell right here, um, here, let's duplicate this and move it over so we can. Wow, that's good. Whoa, found it. From here. Let's say from here to here, that's what we want to know. Yeah. yeah. From here to here is how much? Eight. Always eight. No matter which x we're at, it's always eight, right? And then from the bottom part. The bottom? The bottom. <laughs> that's uh, x squared plus four. X squared plus four. That's how tall that is. So we need and that works for minus. any x. This x, this x, this x, this x, any x. The height is always x squared plus 4. Okay, here it's a little shorter, here it's a little taller. But no matter which x you're at, you always have a height of 8. This is always a height of x squared plus 4. If we subtract, then we find h. So 8 minus all of this, not just subtract x squared, subtract the whole thing, parentheses there. Okay, so, and the radius. How big is the radius if I just choose a value of x? X. 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 Whatever x is, that's the radius. This is x. This is 8 minus x squared plus 4. This would be 6 pi over 3. Okay. If you put it in there, it would be this. Okay. Yeah. You see that? Yeah, I just apparently can't do basic stuff like that. Oh, a lot of people. From zero to four. zero to two, two oh, of x times eight minus the square root of x squared plus four. Why am I doing the square root? I don't know. I don't can tell you. I can't tell you either. Minus x squared plus four dx radius times the height times the width, and we got two pi out there. Five two. Uh, let's see. We got uh, negative x squared plus four. Because we have eight minus four, we still get four. X negative x cubed plus four x. Found my first gray hair for me. No. It was in my beard. <laughs> um, <laughs> like two seconds ago you found it? No, this morning. Did you try? No, I felt distinguished. Oh. <laughs> Fourth x to the fourth plus two x squared. You can be a uh, wizard. Yeah. Two x squared, I don't know where, where my head was. So two, two pi, uh, put two in there, so that's 16, oh, four to get four. Squared to eight. eight. Uh, I got eight. My 
times four, that's four, times four. two is eight, that's eight pi. Mm -hmm. Same answers to your bad mm -hmm. Yeah, what now? Yeah. 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 We were just the weirdest thing going on. Eight had 24, <laughs> it's still 16 with both of us. Yeah, I got 56 pi over three. Yes, over three? <laughs> I'm a genius. That's why I need to be in math literacy, pre-algebra in college. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. It's like the lowest one. It's like level one, level two, three, four, five, six. I'm at level like there's no next level. Like, so low. I'm pretty sure they just kind of close. Oh. No, it's because I got, I scored a 20 on my math class. Yeah, like, no, like, and this is all just like, they put me in a class and I was like, okay, I'm going to now I'm here. So if all your work is right and you got to eat pie, it was only Positive. Uh, I don't know why, I like the to me. I look at this and it doesn't make sense. Any math I just like learned it. I'm bored with this because I did the test for you. We'll do another one. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Here we go. Try both ways this time. Uh, let's skip it. Let's skip that one. Sophie lied to me. That's not. This one right here. Number twenty-two. Did I ever say one was twenty-two? Can you make it look pretty? Michelle thing. Show us magic. Here's the problem with this one. I couldn't get the axis of rotation to be drawn in there. So it's right here. It said x equals 2. I'm going to make sure that's x equals 2. This is number 22. Yeah, x equals 2. I'll draw it in when I take a picture of it. But the axis of rotation is going to be here, not the y axis. Oh, so we're just going to draw it. Okay. <laughs> Shifts over. The radius is going to be different. Like when you change the axis of rotation, it just changes the radius. Think this through. So here's all the possible shells that are going to be defined by these rectangles here. Here's a shell. Okay, it's rotating around x equals two, that vertical line. So all of our shells look like this. Okay. Here are all of them. Whoa. Whoa. But now I need to go to my my keyboard. Oh. 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 Why do you keep doing that? I don't know. You should not do that. Ah. Because when you turn around, it starts like blinking and like going through things. Like you abandoned. Okay, I'll stop doing that. I'll just go like this. There you go. That's all. Okay. Yeah, that's perfect. If I could do all this really fast and you could see all of them at once, we would see this shape form like that. It's the same thing. Samurai. Okay, yeah, again, this is number 22. 22. I don't know about you. Tells you the functions and all that. I feel like I'm a freshman. So here is the difference with this one the axis of rotation. Here's what you got to think about. The radius is from the axis of rotation to the outside of the shell. So you got to think about. So the radius is 2? You say the radius for all shells is 2? Yeah. No. All the shells have the same radius. 2 minus x. No, 2 minus x. No, 2 minus x. Imagine for this for this shell. Just think about this shell. This shell, it, it, its its edge is at this x value, but its radius, no matter where it is, whether it's way out here, really small, it's almost two. It's 
not quite, it's 2 minus that little bit, 2 minus x. Way out here, it's almost nothing, okay? But the x is very big, so we take the 2 minus that big x, and it gives us that little tiny radius for that shell that's in there. And the height is 4x minus x? Uh, it's what? 4x minus x squared. 4x. Is that number 22? Did I write down the wrong thing? Oh, hold on. Uh, so r, we just decided it was 2 minus x. That's how we would define the radius. OK, now let's look at the height. The height of this guy right here from top to bottom, how tall is it? What's this function? 4x minus x squared. And what is this function? Um, x squared. X squared. So it's 4x. Minus x squared. I just want the height. Four x minus x squared. This height would give, be given by four x minus x squared. Okay, but that's all the way from here to there. But I don't want this little bit. Minus x squared. Minus, minus x, x squared. So it's just four x. No. No, that was stupid. Four x minus x squared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're stuck on that? Yeah. Just can't get over it. It was pretty impacting. Bing, <laughs> here we go. I went too fast. I didn't finish yet. No, I got it right. Hey. Please, let me finish my simple math. I'll calm down. Here's our radius. Here's our height. This is our integral. Forget that 2 pi. Okay, what's, uh, what's what are A and B? Zero. Uh, yeah, there you go. Are you sure? Yes. How do you know? You set them, them equal to each other. Huh? You set them equal to each other. You set them equal to each other. Thank you, good for me. Student. Thank you! 4x minus x squared equals x squared. Two x squared minus four x equals zero. Yes. Two x times x minus two uh, equals zero. X equals zero. X equals two. Zero to two. Our radius is two minus x. Our height is four x minus two x squared. And our width two x. Gonna multiply it all together. So. Zeros. Of course, we're going to get all zeros. Don't forget about your other, your lower limits. Sometimes it's not just zero. change where our axis of rotation is, it's going to change our radius. Okay, we're at the G. Yeah, 
Okay. Just, just, just keep in mind where your functions are, where your axis of rotation is. Sometimes your radius, like if your if your function is all over here and your your axis of rotation is over here, you're going to have your, the location of your your axis plus x uh, might be the the radius, or might be x minus the radius, or just depending on where the where the axis of rotation is, you're going to give that some thought. But other than that, if you can figure out what the radius is, what the height is, you just fill this guy in. Just fill yeah. the blank. And it's pretty, yeah, what once you like, figure out what that is, it's pretty simple. Yeah. And it, I know you don't, I mean, you could have this program. It is not simple to use. <laughs> it doesn't look simple to use. It is. not just let you. So, really. lay it on a but now that you've, you've seen it, like this is how, you can make your brains work. Your brains can do this much more quickly than this computer can. So you can imagine no, no, no. this. Now we get the shell is going to look like this, and the radius is going to be from here to there. This is going to define the radius. This is going to define the height. Fill it in.